Voyager 1 has sent a message to Earth that NASA scientists describe as abnormal. Later, the probe even threatened to shut down completely. But what on Earth happened in interstellar space? Have we finally received a response to the Voyager Golden Records? Or was the probe hijacked by aliens and sent back to Earth with a declaration of war? Be sure to stay tuned until the end if you want to know what incidents with Voyager 1 is keeping experts on their toes. The Voyager program staff certainly can't complain about having too little work to do. While the two identical probes have been traveling through space since 1977 and have been providing us with unique data from interstellar space for quite some time, the flying old timers are increasingly attracting attention with technical glitches. NASA has had to repeatedly come up with creative solutions to respond to defects in the onboard computer or the maneuvering thrusters, not to mention the sudden loss of contact, which has become almost routine for Voyager. So far, however, experts have always managed to fix the probe's problems and keep the longest running mission in space history going. And to ensure that this continues for as long as possible, NASA has been following a strict power-saving plan for some time, which involves switching off more and more of the spacecraft's scientific instruments. And although the Voyager probes are undoubtedly a prime example of robust technology, another fiasco threatened just a few weeks ago. This time, it affected one of the thrusters needed to control the orientation of Voyager 1. Some of these thrusters ensure that the probe's antenna always points toward Earth, thus maintaining radio contact over enormous distances. And we really mean enormous distances. After all, Voyager 1 has traveled an incredible 25 billion kilometers between itself and the Sun in the last 50 years. As a result, it takes almost a whole day for a signal sent from Earth to reach the probe, and then just as long again for us to receive the reply. Well, that's assuming everything works smoothly, of course. In addition to the thrusters mentioned above, there are four more, known as roll thrusters, which control the orientation of Voyager 1 around its longitudinal axis. These roll control thrusters are activated whenever the system detects deviations from the target star. And, as with all components on board, there is also a backup system for these thrusters. Normally, both probes switch back and forth between the regular and backup thrusters on a regular basis. This is to prevent the fuel lines from becoming too clogged over time. The problem, however, is that Voyager 1 has been using its backup thrusters since 2004. The reason for this is that the heating elements of the primary roll control systems failed at that time, and the experts did not believe they could repair the defect. In the meantime, however, the fuel lines of the replacement nozzles have become so clogged that they would be completely blocked by autumn of this year at the latest. And let's be clear, that would mean nothing less than the end of Voyager 1, the expert's hope and the race against time. NASA engineers were not willing to simply accept this unfortunate fate, so they came up with a risky plan and decided to reactivate the primary thrusters that had failed over 20 years ago. The hope was that they had not been irreparably damaged, as had been assumed at the time, but that the defect was only due to a kind of emergency shutdown of the heating system. The idea was that if this were switched back on, the roll control system could also work again. However, this step also involved a considerable risk. If the probe changes its position too much during the switch-on sequence of the heaters and nozzles, the onboard computer automatically triggers the firing of the roll control nozzles. The bottom line is that the entire system could explode if the nozzles are already online but the heaters are not, and then the roll control system and possibly other systems would be irreparably damaged. And as if this scenario wasn't tricky enough, the NASA experts were also under time pressure. The jet system change had to be completed by May 4, 2025, at the latest. This time, however, it was not due to the weak probe technology, but to Deep Space Station 43, which is the main communication link to Voyager 1 and 2. As part of the Deep Space Network, the 70-meter monster antenna is located in Canberra, Australia, and had to go offline for several months at the beginning of May to be upgraded and rebuilt. And since the NASA ground team didn't want to wait until the last minute to send their risky command, they did so on March 20th. After hours of anxious waiting, the status data sent by Voyager 1 finally showed the hoped-for result. The primary roll control system was successfully reactivated, and the temperature of the jet heaters, which had been deactivated for 21 years, rose significantly. The rest of the switch also went as planned, 
adding yet another entry to the list of miraculous Voyager rescues. Voyager's inexplicable message. And let's not forget, although the Voyager probes date back to a time when there were no smartphones or modern computers, they are still functioning today despite all the complications. No other man-made object has ever ventured so far into space, and it's only natural that the data Voyager 1 and 2 are sending us from the wondrous world of interstellar space is as unique as it is groundbreaking. But what do you do when that groundbreaking data is suddenly replaced by a mysterious jumble that makes absolutely no sense? When the most remote outpost of humanity suddenly transmits signals that can no longer even be read, or when the probe indicates that it is in a position that simply cannot correspond to reality, well, then we would have arrived at exactly the scenario that became reality for NASA scientists three years ago. Due to the chaotic telemetry data, experts initially focused their attention on the attitude articulation and control system. And indeed, the AACS data pointed to a system failure, which made it all the more strange that the probe was functioning smoothly apart from that. It transmitted data from its scientific instruments as usual and continued to respond to commands from Earth. So could it be that the main antenna was no longer pointing precisely at Earth? Well, this was also quickly ruled out as the signal strength of the radio link remained high. In the end, it took many weeks for NASA to get to the bottom of the data gibberish. And in the meantime, the internet did what it does best. It came up with the most adventurous speculations about Voyager's confusing messages. And we should not forget that the probe duo is not actually traveling alone. As is well known, both spacecraft were equipped with the Voyager Golden Records, data disks containing image and audio information that provide basic knowledge about Earth and its inhabitants. In addition to images and Earth sounds, these include spoken greetings and pieces of music by Bach and Beethoven. But how smart was it to reveal ourselves in this way? In and of themselves, the records are only intended to give extraterrestrial discoverers an impression of the diversity of life on Earth and the culture of humankind. But perhaps this approach was a little naive. In fact, the decision to make cosmic contact was not met with unanimous applause among experts. Quite the contrary, because according to leading experts, such as Stephen Hawking, such messages could end not only in peaceful exchange, but in our own destruction. The genius, who died in 2018, pointed out that we simply cannot predict who will ultimately get their hands on the Voyager Golden Records. Although Earth is still the only celestial body in the cosmos known to us that has produced life, it could be that a hostile, aggressive species is lurking out there that sees our home planet merely as a welcome source of raw materials to be plundered. But for now, and this is the reassuring part, we are spared a war of the worlds. Because the jumble of data from Voyager 1 was not, of course, based on an encrypted alien declaration of war. But what had happened then? Well, first of all, NASA engineers discovered that the attitude control system was actually working perfectly. Well, with one exception. It was attempting to send telemetry data to Earth via an onboard computer that had not been working for years. As a result, the information arrived at the Earth stations as chopped up data garbage causing nothing but confusion. Once the cause had been identified, NASA used the radio antennas of the Deep Space Network to instruct the AACS to transmit the data to the correct, intact, onboard computer in the future. This was successful, and the experts were once again able to enjoy accurate telemetry data. However, one question remained unanswered. What had caused the attitude control system to default to the wrong computer in the first place? NASA employees could only speculate at first, Perhaps the cause lay dormant in a faulty command from another component of the onboard electronics. Ultimately, however, it became clear that the error had been hiding in the flight data subsystem, a computer that packs data into packets before sending them to Earth. As it turned out, 3% of the memory was defective, and NASA suspected that a single chip could be the source of the error. And now, with just one click, you can subscribe to our channel. Simply click on the thumbnail and subscribe to never miss another video from us again. We'll see you soon.